So we know why we are here. Windows 10 is gonna die in just a few days and uh, that's a big problem because a lot of users are still on Windows 10 and a lot of those users use Windows 10 because it's not compatible with Windows 11. So today we're gonna be checking out what kind of alternative options do we have and we're gonna start with Windows 11. Yes, Windows 11. Despite the fact that it quote-unquote requires TPM, uh, in reality, it really does not. All it takes is just a few clicks on a Rufus program, which is a program that lets you create Windows 11 bootable USB to bypass those requirements and it will work just fine. However, there are still some caveats. Microsoft detects if you bypass this requirement and pretty much blocks you from Windows updates. So what do we do then? Well, there's this Windows 11 version that some of you may or may not heard of. It's Windows 11 LTCS and this version does not have that at all. Now if you don't know what Windows 11 LTCS is, it's basically a Windows version for enterprises, you know, companies and such. The cool thing about this version is that it doesn't have as much bloatware or ads as the regular Windows 11. And honestly, this is the version that I would recommend installing. I use that version on my main computer that's Windows 11 compatible, by the way, and it's amazing. It doesn't have Microsoft Store, though I did download it because I have some games there. You can uninstall Microsoft Edge. It doesn't have the ads on the start menu. It's literally the dream. So if the only problems you have with Windows 11 is the ads and the fact that you cannot install it, then this is absolutely the way to go. Okay, but what if you're tired of Microsoft? What if you want to ditch them and point a middle finger at them. Well, there's macOS. macOS is uh, the operating system developed by Apple. If you own the iPhone, macOS is absolutely a dream because uh, they are very interconnected. You can send files, you can open links that you open on iPhone. The interconnectivity between iOS and macOS is absolutely amazing. And macOS pretty much has all the programs that normal Windows user would like to use, like a full Adobe suite, Fusion, FL Studio, Microsoft Office, and so on. However, I'm not gonna pretend that uh, obtaining macOS is exactly simple because you have to buy a Mac. And while Mac prices have gone down, it's still quite a lot in terms of RAM upgrades and storage upgrades. Not to mention you're pretty much stuck with whatever hardware Apple provides. But the biggest downside of macOS is gaming. Gaming on macOS, uh, it's possible, but it's... It's not great, let's just say. Okay, but what other option do we have? Is there an operating system that doesn't require me buying a whole new computer and that is at least remotely a good Windows competitor? Well... Uh... Okay, Linux. If there is any operating system that's a good alternative to Windows that can be put on a same PC, it's Linux. Linux isn't exactly the OS, it's just a kernel that powers many different operating systems or distros. Now, Linux is the kind of operating system where if it works for you, it works for you really well and you're not gonna switch from Windows ever again. But if something doesn't work, then oh boy, you're in for a ride. Now, why am I talking about, you may ask? Well, ask this 2010 MacBook. And this Acer laptop that supposed to work when I was making this video, but unfortunately its charging port died, so I can't demonstrate it. But basically, this Acer laptop works perfectly with Linux. I just plugged in Fedora USB on it, it booted, I installed it, everything just worked, nothing bad was happening aside from Wi-Fi dropping out, but apparently it turned out to be a Wi-Fi hardware related issue, same thing was happening on Windows for me, so I swapped that Wi-Fi card to an Intel Wi-Fi card and everything worked flawlessly afterwards. I would have just continued to use the Linux on it, because honestly it's perfect for it. It became so much faster and so much stabler. Now, once this laptop died, 
I was forced to sit with this 2010 MacBook that I bought just for the sake so it could run macOS for some legacy iOS jailbreak scripts and something else interesting that I might make a video on. So while I'm stuck using this thing unironically, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna swap its HDD to SSD and I did. It wasn't a hard process, I just had to buy an SSD and a screwdriver that had these weird torque screws. So I lifted up the back cover of the laptop, I unplugged the battery, I unscrewed the HDD, I put an SSD in, I did the internet recovery, and this MacBook became much faster with SSD. If you have a laptop or old Mac that uses HDD and you think it's slow, just upgrade to SSD and you will be shocked how fast your machine is. But anyway, I partitioned my Mac OS drive so I could dual boot Linux on it. Yeah, I know, Linux on Mac, kind of weird, but hey. Once I dual boot Linux, I started having some issues. First issue was Wi-Fi. After booting Linux, in three minutes, the Wi-Fi signal was just dropping out, and it turned out the Broadcom card that this MacBook uses has a really awful Linux driver. So I tried installing the proprietary Wi-Fi drivers and work. I decided afterwards to install Steam and run Celeste on it. Unfortunately, Celeste was having some uh, issues. The stuff was just not rendering. It turns out that this MacBook uses an NVIDIA GT 3020M, and I don't wanna yap too much just so this video won't become 40 minutes long, but basically, Linux was using open source drivers for this NVIDIA card, and open source drivers for NVIDIA suck, so I needed a proprietary NVIDIA drivers and unfortunately the proprietary drivers have dropped support for this GPU like long long time ago in 2019 so I had to install some PPAs which is basically package archives and um, no matter what I tried it just didn't work the drivers would either not install or if they did install I would get a black screen and the install is basically broken I could not access it at all basically if you have a MacBook 2010 plastic don't install Linux on it it's not worth it. This kind of shows the two types of hardware, the hardware where it works and where it doesn't. Another issue with Linux is the software. Now since I installed Linux on a secondary computer being a laptop, I had no issues with it, because all I do on the laptop is type documents, use browser, maybe play some light games, which unfortunately didn't work on MacBook, but still. Basically, not something highly intensive or something that requires a proprietary software. But if you're gonna try to use Linux as a main operating system, then it's gonna be tough. Yes, there are ways to like install some of the proprietary programs through Wine, or uh, there's also a new recent method that is called WinApps, where you basically install Windows Virtual Machine on Docker. They aren't really great, especially the second one. With second one, you're pretty much using a lot of resources compared to just running Windows. Like, I don't get it, why people are hyping this up. So, in my personal hot take, Linux isn't for everyone. No matter how hard people are trying to gas it up, it definitely has improved, but it's still not fair. Okay, but what if I don't like using Windows 11, I don't want to spend $1,000 on the Mac, and I don't want to deal with Linux? What do I do then? Well, Brochacho, you only have like three options. Either staying on Windows 10 completely unprotected, to future security vulnerabilities, updating to ESU that goes up to 2028, or installing Windows 10 IoT Enterprise which goes up to 2032. The problem with all of these three is that programs and drivers will eventually drop support before the support for the such versions even stops, so like, I don't really see the reason for that to be honest. Even though Windows 10 IoT LTCS goes up to 2032, I really, really doubt Steam is gonna support Windows 10 for this long. That's all the viable options we have pretty much. And I say viable because I know for a fact there will be at least two people that will type FreeBSD, OpenBSD, Haiku or whatever there is. No. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say to these operating systems. No. <laughs>
Nobody is using them, bruh. Personally, I tried using Linux on desktop. It didn't really work well because of NVIDIA drivers, so I just gave up and started using Windows 11. Windows 10 Dev, to be honest, is pretty scary because a lot of people are genuinely just throwing out their computers because it doesn't support Windows 11. So I genuinely hope I give some useful information on what you can do once Windows 10 dies. So this was Pracker, and please don't throw out your computers. Bye-bye.